Father God, I come to you today and we just thank you for this wonderful child. We know that she is precious in your sight and we're so glad that you brought this precious gem amongst us. And I just ask that you give your anointing to her and that we all are raised to the next level because of this special Amen. child that we have. Just we just want to praise you and thank you for all that you have done and all that you are going to do. In your name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 Last, la last couple places we're going to go with this. Look over in Hebrews 1 and 3. Hebrews 1 and 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power upholding all things by the word of his power. As she comes forth in this word, the word of his power that she's assigned to speak and to preach and to teach, and she'll, she'll is probably already discovering it in real tangible ways, and it'll only get stronger and clear, you know, retool and focus. We see through a glass darkly and we're always... But, but she'll notice that some things she says are, up more, are upheld more than others. Brother Hagen Jr. tells a story of how, because of his father being so strong in, in faith and teaching faith and that type of thing, he just kind of, you know, was a little in being under the shadows there. You know what? He just wanted to do it. He'd find his own way. And so he, when he was evangelizing, he'd get off into other topics and stuff. And he said after a little while, he noticed the anointing just wasn't the same. Till finally he just said, you know what? So my dad is a giant in the faith and he teaches faith. And, and so, you know what? The anointing on my life is always stronger when I'm teaching faith. So I'm just going to yield to that. It's not that I couldn't teach other things. I'm just going to teach what I'm anointed to teach. And it's faith. And he, his, the anointing came back. The results came back. You know, and I have to be careful too because I like to teach on a multitude of different things. But he always gets me back to what? Faith and healing. Always. We, no matter what, it'll always come back to faith and healing. Because I'm in that same boat. And so you stay true to your heritage, your roots, your legacy, your ancestry. And uh, it's not that you, you aren't required to know many other things. You are. To pastor, you need to know something of everything. Even natural things, not just spiritual things. But invariably, there's, there are words that, that she'll discover that are upheld with a strong, strong anointing. And every time she, she starts getting off teaching on it, the anointing gets thicker and thicker and thicker. And that's the Lord saying, hey, go that way, go that direction. And then you might get on something else like, you know, uh, mercy or something, I don't know, whatever, you know, I have thoughts, but I have to keep it to myself. But mercy, we should, what are we gonna teach on mercy today? Well, everybody in the world needs to hear about mercy. Praise God. But now if that's not, her word, it won't be the same strength as deliverance. You see what I'm saying? And the minute she gets off of mercy and back on the deliverance, and I'm not saying there isn't mercy involved in deliverance, boom, there's, she, you can feel the mantle, the cloak come on. And so that's God saying, hey, right there, right there. Doug, same way. I, he, I don't know if he's noticed this or not, but I can think of two times when I've asked him to preach for me, and each time, it had to do with your words. One was on gossip, and the other was words. If I'm remembering that correctly. So what do you, what do you think? Grace is the divine influence upon the heart. Whatever influences your heart is your grace. 
what you just find yourself saying and doing is your grace. You see? And everybody has some. That's a supply he's being called to make, at least for this time. Words. Um, and that's important because faith comes by hearing and hearing by words. You know, Nancy, what did you teach on? What was that sermon you taught on? Uh, Sunday morning, it was about uh, oppression and depression. Okay. And then Tuesday night, it was about renewing the mind uh, to bring you back, you know, out of the depression and the oppression. Renew your mind to the Word and the revival and fire. Well, and so now you kind of hear the divine influence upon her heart. Because when it, when it comes down and the fight is on and it's time to go Yosemite Sam, we're not talking about kumbaya. We're not talking about feeding orphans. We're talking about when she's when it's on, what's coming out of her? Deliverance and renewal. Deliverance and renewal. And that's God saying, hey, it's not that you can't teach other things, and it's not that I'm not requiring you to know other things, but hey, cultivate that. Train up a child in the way or the bent that they should go, and even when they're old, they won't depart from it. And that works in ministry too. That's what we're talking about here. Already, what's our, our, our brother here, Zach, showing a tendency towards? Already, not five minutes into it. Love and healing. He's not up there talking about depression, oppression. I mean, not that he couldn't, but what's coming out of his knower? Love and healing. And in and the Lord, you know, and he'll cultivate that, cultivate that. Kendra, what are you, what, what was, what did the pastor ask you to start teaching on? Ministry folks. Huh, imagine that. Sometimes it just falls in your lap like that. And I'm guessing it was tremendously anointed because I saw the notes on it. I'm up here going, I repent. <laughs> <You know? laughs> cultivate that. There's more to that than what meets the eye. Isaiah 45 and 3, the hidden riches in secret places, the treasures of darkness. We're talking about resurrection power. You were, you were dead, and now you're alive in Christ. Your new life has come, and you have a bent. You have a grace in that way. I know Lynn, you know, she might fight it, but divine healing. She just is like a kid in a candy store in a healing service. And she wants to know all about the gifts. She's not out here talking about let's feed America. That's the noble good deed. But what is her, what's her grace? What is God saying here? You make this supply, healing. Only people she brings to church are people that need a healing. And she's humble about it too. Well, I thought I knew all this stuff, but now, and that's the truth. The more you think you know, the less you realize you do know. A humble heart like that can be taught. LaRue's is foreign languages. Starting with teet, teet, ta. <laughs> I'm guessing it's along the lines of compassion and mercy and peace because that's what, that's probably what floats her boat is when people are compassionate and merciful and peaceful. If not, hit the road, Jack. Ain't got time for you. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. Okay, pray. All right. So it, it's not, we're, we're, we're imparting into Lindsay today, but each of you will, you, you have that, you know, and we will have an impartation service. I can already see that coming. All right, does that help? It's 735 and we started at six. It's an hour and 35 minutes. Most normal churches stop right about now.
Well, let's, 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 uh, oh, my Lord. I, I just feel the Holy Spirit right now. Flights have fallen from heaven. Well, let's, let, let's, uh, let's finish this right here and then we'll, we'll probably be done. We'll look at it. Yeah, I, I was looking over there. I saw it. Praise the Lord. Turn with me real quickly to John one thirty two, and we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. I want you to see some things here that goes with now that the word's been released into her. Now, now this is she'll want to aim towards the convergence of the word and the spirit that, to to birth that out over and over and over. Uh, new levels, new glory. John chapter 1, verse 32. And then we're going to lay hands on some dogs. We're going to converge on some canines here in a minute. Just the gospel of John. Uh, John chapter 1, verse 32. Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 32. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode on him. All right, now go to John chapter 2 and verse 11. Next chapter. Thirty-one. 40 verses later, just 40 verses later, after the Spirit descends upon the Word, the incarnate Word. Hold your finger there. I want to show you something. Go, go back to John 1 and 1. Just, just flip, before we go to John 2, 11, let's flip back here. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him and without Him, was not anything made that was made. Now, you go on down to verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus is, was, and will always be the word. Now flip back to John 1.32. And John bare record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. Was Jesus the Word before the Spirit descended? 